Where's the ESPN? Are they here yet? <laughs> Try and break the ice a little bit, didn't I? Ah, uh, please bear with me. You can probably laugh a bit more about that ESPN joke if you like. <laughs> uh, as you all know, on Saturday against the New Zealand Breakers, I left the game early in the first quarter with a knee injury. <clears throat> Yesterday I met with a specialist after having MRI scans on Tuesday. In no uncertain terms, I was informed my season was over. It was then that I knew my career was over. The reason I say that because I always intended for this to be my last playing, my last season playing professional basketball. It was not the way I wanted my career to finish, but this is the situation that I've been dealt. Early in the year, I had made my mind up that this was going to be my last season. Unfortunately, the knee injury has brought forward my retirement in the game. I still felt at this stage of my career that I was competing at a high level and still playing good basketball. The team has gone through a battlefield of injuries already this year, but I know the guys we've got will be giving it their all to finish the season strong as they can, as they can, feel as strong as they can, and it saddens me to know that I cannot assist them with this. Given I've been through this kind of rehab before with my other knee, I wasn't prepared to go into another season worrying whether or not I would make it through or have a, to deal with another injury let alone put the same commitment and time like I have throughout my career. I look back in my career and have many fond memories. Standing out is representing Australia 2004 and 2008 Olympics. The 2010 grand final appearance as well as bringing home Wollongong's first NBL title in 2001. Now this is going to be difficult. I have many people to thank and I'd like to take this time to acknowledge them today. First and foremost to my parents for the sacrifice and commitment. commitment. To give me the opportunities to develop as an athlete and as a basketballer, without them, I would not be where I am today. To my wife, Angela, and my two beautiful boys, Riley and Flynn, for their continued love and support through this very tough time, I love you very much. To my past and present teammates, thank you for the camaraderie along with the banter. I've made many lifelong friends. I miss competing and going into battle with you guys. I would like to thank my coaches over my career. Brendan Joyce, Brian Gorgian, Eric Cooks, Matt Flynn, and in particular, Gordy. From an early age, Gordy was very influ influential in my career helping guide me to the Hawks back in 1995 when he was my coach at the AIS. To then have the opportunity to play under Gordy for the past four seasons in a professional environment has been very rewarding and an enjoyable experience. To the previous owners of the Hawks, including the Illawarra Basketball Association, John Carson, Richard Clifford, Bob Elvey, Peter Abba, thank you for your commitment in ensuring the Hawks continue their years of, in your ownership. To Pete Barman, our chairman and the current board of our community-owned Wollongong NRE Hawks, thank you for your support during my career and as I begin my road to recovery. Thank you to my agent and good mate, Jeff Maguire. He's fulfilled his role and exceeded all expectations of what was required. 
On so many occasions, he was the voice of reason, and he could always, and he was always a person that I could trust and rely on his judgment. Thank you to our support staff. Anita Bout, Mark Muir, Kerry Lawrence, Doc Yarrow, Doc Parrish, Phil Driscoll, and in particular our trainer, David Boyle, whose friendship, support and motivation has contributed a great deal to my success and longevity. Thank you to our front, front office staff and game night volunteers who have been the backbone of our operations and who have supported me throughout the years. Thank you also to our life members of the club. You all have paved the way for guys like myself and Matt to look up to and show what it truly means to have been a Wollongong Hawk. To Matt Campbell, my teammate for 16 seasons, my mate from Bendigo, we played 483 games together, a record that may never be broken. Thanks for being my teammate, captain, and also a lifelong friend. And I did beat your record, by the way. <laughs> Just, just, just. <laughs> to the members, corporate partners and fans of, Wollongong, of the Wollongong NRE Hawks, you have all stuck by this club through thick and thin and always supported me, even when I did come back from the Kings. <laughs> you heckled me when I was a bit and I came back. So it was good. Thank you for showing your support and admiration for the past 18 years. I truly appreciate it. I won't be going anywhere this season. I'll remain with the team and also begin my recovery process with our support staff after surgery on Friday the 8th of Feb. I hope I can provide guidance and support to the team as they push for a finals berth. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for your attendance today. Uh, this was always going to be a sad day for Glenn, and the club and his many fans. Uh, but it's been made that much harder by the fact that injury has determined the timing and has ended things for Sav mid-season. On behalf of the Hawks board, the members and Glenn's fans over a long and distinguished career, I firstly offer my commiserations on the circumstances of his retirement due to injury, which is no doubt painful on various levels. It's my hope that Glenn won't dwell on those circumstances. I hope he will quickly look to enjoyment of the accolades he receives and well deserves and will celebrate what has been an absolutely outstanding career. The numbers tell the story. Glenn is the all-time leader in the following categories for the Hawks. Games played, scoring, rebounding, assists, steals, blocks, free throws made, field go goals made, Thousand <laughs> turnovers. <laughs> Games 527. Points 6,865. Rebounds 4,041. Assists 1,847. Blocks 423. Steals 776. Thousand turnovers. I'll lose those. <laughs> His 527 games for the Hawks is second only to Andrew Gaze's 612 games for the Tigers. His total of 563 NBL games overall is fourth most of any player in this league's history behind the great names Tony Ronaldson, Andrew Gaze and Leroy Loggins. He represented Australia in the Olympics in 2004 and 2008. He was the grand final MVP of the 2001 championship team. He was the NBL best defensive player, 2003. Glenn brought to our game not just amazing athletic talent, but dedication and thorough professionalism. 
that professional commitment gave rise to the continuous development of his game and has kept him performing at the highest level right up until his final game. I thank Glenn for his contribution to our club and this community for so many years. He's inspired so many of us. He was central in bringing us to the championship in 2001. He's entertained us with his tremendous ability. He's been a great leader in our organisation. Though we will lose and miss Glenn Savile as a player, we get to keep his legacy of professionalism. That attitude that he's instilled in this club and his teammates. It's something that will continue to benefit our club for many years. Glenn, congratulations on an amazing career. We wish you every success in the future and look forward to your other contributions that you'll no doubt make in our basketball and broader community. Thanks, Peter. Well done, mate. Thanks, mate. It's over to you for questions. Did you get much sleep the last couple of nights? Actually slept all right last night. Um, <laughs> Ange didn't. <laughs> uh, Flynn's been a bit crook, but uh, no, it was, it was a long day yesterday. Um, you yeah, know, obviously talking to you know a lot of friends and family. It's very tough to break them uh, the news uh, that you're going to retire. It's very hard to do that. Um, but you know, I think obviously I'm very emotional now. But there's a lot of there's a lot of things to um, reflect on that I did. You know very well in the game, and and uh, to go out like this is not never you know a way that you would like to go out of the game when it's not on your terms. Um, but you know I have to look back at the things that uh, the good times, and and you know even up until this point, I really enjoyed you know this season with the guys, and um, and uh, yeah, it's a shame it's ended that way. But um, you know I'll, I'll get on, I'll move on from it, and, and I'll remember all the good times. When you hurt your knee on the weekend and then you got the, the news yesterday after the scan, did you have some hope that you Well when I did when I did the knee on Saturday night I knew I knew straight away there was something wrong with it. I knew um, mechanically that um, it was pretty obvious that there was some cartilage damage in there given you know the injuries I've had with my right knee. Um, and it's very similar injury and the surgery's going to be exactly the same for my, my right knee. Um, I was hoping that, you know what it would, I would just go in there and the, the doc would say, um, you know, we'll just, we'll just do an arthroscope and clean it up and you'll be back in, you know, four weeks and then hoping to finish out, the, you know, the rest of the season and hopefully playoffs. That was my hope when I went in there. Um, obviously, it was hard not to think before that of the worst and, and I had prepared myself a little way, but, um, you know, when he put the first slide in, he practically said, you know, oh, no, um, that's not good. Um, and then he said, how long to go in the rest of the season? I said, oh, we've got about six weeks. And you know, he said, oh, well, unfortunately, your season's over. And then I said, well, that's, that's too bad because my career's over. It was a very difficult moment, but um, you know, it's, yeah, it's, uh, don't have great knees. <laughs> and what, where to from here, what are you going to do for the next four months or so? Lead a life of leisure. Just <laughs> <laughs> pretty much what pretty much what Matt's doing. Uh, my plan, my plan. I mean, I, I'd always prepare myself to retire after this season, and um, you know, I'd spoken to various people throughout that time. I think that was my way of dealing with the fact that I was going to retire. I think you know it's hard for me now to to have this press conference that my career is over now, but I still think it would have been hard you now had it been. You know, had I still had the opportunity to play the rest of the season, that would have been very difficult. Um, and you know, at this stage, I don't have a lot of plans. Obviously, um, you know, my wife's very busy with with her businesses, and and um, you know, we've got some young kids and stuff. So, um, fancy myself as a home dad. So, that was only one day a week. That'd be good. But um, you know, uh, you know, it's yeah. I haven't given a lot of thought this time. Obviously, with my rehab, I'm still going to be around the boys. Um, hopefully, maybe make a road trip or two um, if my wife lets me go away anymore. Um, you know, just yeah, still be around the team until the end of the season. I think I think 
that would be good to, to close it out for me instead of just finishing now and saying see you later I think it's going to be best for me to be around so I can still yell at them from the sidelines instead of when I'm training with them does it, does it hurt knowing that you're not going to get that farewell game like we had with Matt at the end of last season? Yeah, it does, without a doubt, because you know being a part of that with Matt along the way was, was pretty special. And to see that the, you know, that the, the way that it took place as well, you know, we won our last three games and winning that game at home and Matt getting a chance to say good, goodbye the way that he did, that, you know, mine is just going to have to be a little bit different. That's just the way it is, you know. And it's hard. That's going to be difficult. Um, but yeah, I'll just like I said, I'll continue to remember the good times in it, and, and I know I'm still going to get a lot of love from the fans and, and everyone else that uh, you know through this time, and I just get to see it from a different perspective now. Um, hopefully, get, the boys can make it through the finals. Talking to Oz yesterday, he was saying because anyone in the comp that deserves to go to Perth, and you know you've been booed by everyone in Perth for 20 years, <laughs> but if there's anyone who deserves to go around the country and farewell fans. You know, it's you. I mean, do you think about what you've done for the NBL over nine years? Um, oh yeah, I think um, probably something I haven't given a lot of thought about. You kind of, you kind of just sort of think about what you try and do individually and what you do as a team. You probably don't, you know, probably don't really think about what you're doing for the the good of the game or you know how people um, look at you and all that kind of stuff. So um, it's probably something I haven't. You know, thought too much about. I guess when I when I do look at the amount of games that I've played and and how long I've been around the competition, I guess that you know, it's a tough thing to be you know a competitor in a professional sport for and be the fourth all-time games played. And so I hopefully you know be recognised for you know my longevity and and you know coming from where I came from as a young fella and you know pretty wet behind the ears and um, you know very raw talent to to, to coming through and. You know, being a professional athlete for 19 seasons is, um, you know, something I'm very proud of, and and I know that, uh, you know, people will appreciate. It. I know my coaches would all appreciate it, particularly, you know, from an early age. Um, you know, would never have thought possibly I could get to that to that point possibly. You many injured splashes. You know, Wollongong's done a lot, you know, kind of giving you the life you've got now. Come that game where you do step out of that court and pair with fans, I mean, have you thought about what that's going to be like? I can't get past that splashes comment. <laughs> I will point out, though, I actually met her there. She doesn't remember. She didn't remember when I met her, so... So much for my first impression, hey. Um, so what was the other question? <laughs> um, I, yeah, I look, it's it's like it's been a very emotional time, and I think um, you know whatever the club plans for me, you know whenever I get to say farewell to the fans and all that kind of stuff, that's going to be a very tough time as well because I look I look out into the stands and I see so many people, you know, the same faces that I've seen for almost twenty years. You know, it's um, I know they're going to be. Um, Feeling it just as much as I am. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, I thought I'd done crying, but uh, <laughs> I know they're you know, and a lot of them are lifelong friends and you know, and acquaintances and all that kind of stuff. And that's what that's the best part about being playing playing here. And you know, and it, it, coming to Wollongong has given me so many wonderful opportunities. Um, meeting my wife, although she didn't remember it when we first met, but you know, <laughs> our beautiful family, her family. Um, I'm pretty sure we're not moving back to Bendigo, so <laughs> you've got me here for a, a long time. Thanks, everyone. Thank if there's you. nothing further, thanks, Glenn. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>